each other for a long time, actually. We're old friends. We've been playing music with each other for 15 years and different bands, different things. And one day we started playing the blues for fun and kind of became the one band. And we decided to stop everything else and be Daddy Long Legs. And now here we are today, two years later. So we came naturally. This has been my uh, nickname since I was in high school. People used to always call me Daddy Long Legs. Years later, when I, we started experimenting uh, with the blues, and uh, you know, I, I was getting into guys like Holland Wolf, Captain Beefheart, Sonny Boy Williamson, Peg Leg Sam. Uh, I was looking for a name that, that kind of fit and uh, Daddy Long Legs seemed like the most natural choice. Yeah. And he has long legs. Everybody has their own role in this band and we each of us stick individually to what we do best in the band. Yeah. He's like the main songwriter. <clears throat> I'm like the Italian mother. <laughs> And I just play guitar. Yeah, he just plays guitar. <laughs> we all write together a little bit too. It's kind of like all comes together in the end, you know. So. We wanted to get more definition out of the recording and um, to kind of push um, our own music forward in a way. So I think, yeah, it's it's grown a bit and the songwriting has advanced a bit and the song the sound has gotten bigger and more diverse. We also had more time to make this record, so we had more time to work on the actual arrangement and production and all that stuff. It was, uh, we had the liberty of having a little bit more time on this one, so that definitely made a difference too. Yeah, we spent about two, almost two years on and off the road and rehearsing, just writing songs all the time, getting ready for the record. And then, yeah, Brian took a little trip down to Nashville to hang out with our producer, Jimmy Sutton, came up with some stuff down there, and, uh, you know, wrote one of the songs, Pink Lemonade, with J.D. McPherson down there, which seems to be uh, getting a lot of uh, thumbs up from people. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we changed, we tweaked everything in the studio. In Chicago, we were recording. Yeah, in Chicago, yeah, in the <laughs> so, studio in Chicago. So. Another place. Okay, so, yeah, it was, it was really good to have a, a producer that was hands-on, you know. I walking just the other day. That was actually just a, uh, an accident. It was a coincidence and an accident. We just knew Jimmy had built that studio and we wanted him to produce it and we liked the stuff that had come out of there and it just happened to be in Chicago. Yeah, it wasn't any intentional blues decision or anything. Yeah, and then it ended up being in Chicago next to, you know, spiritual kind of birthplace of all this stuff, Chess Records, so it was nice for us. We had no time to go visit these places, but you know, you could, it was nice to be in Chicago because it was in the back of our brain the whole time. Yeah, like, this is in the air a really, little bit. I had Willie really Dixon in the back of my brain during the whole the other The other records we recorded in New York, which meant a lot more distractions, you know, mm -hmm. so we were kind of isolated there and could just really focus on the, well, we had the task at hand. Yeah. Yeah. And I started talking. I think he figured out how to record us properly, you know. Um, I think he listened to us and listened to our ideas and listened to where we're coming from musically, our influences and stuff. I think he has a really good handle on that. I think that he is kind of like the expert at producing vintage sounds but putting them in a modern context. And that's what we wanted to do with this record, was not just make another throwback rock and roll rhythm and blues record, but also have something that is kicking down the doors of the 21st century. No. I think the record is more us and less um, our influences. I think this is the record that has really become Daddy Long Legs and not just a band that sounds like a bunch of their influences. I talking about my low down ways. Then I started singing. We always wanted to do more acoustic uh, stuff on our records, but really just didn't have the time. Um, and this one, we really got to see that through. I think like. You know, Flaming Groovy's Teenage Head is one of our favorite records of all time, and we love like the variety that's on there. They like the acoustic and electric side of that record, and we got to really kind of explore that with this one. I mean, 
to me, there's nothing heavier than, than just one man and his acoustic guitar, Lightning Hopkins, all of our primitive Delta blues musicians that we like. There's, there's really nothing better than that. And, uh, I wanted to get some more of that element on this record, and when we did, I'm really happy about that. Running, clapping my hands, and then I started stopping. Everybody has low down ways. It's like the blues that haunt you in the middle of the night. It's the evil spirit. Um, it, it takes on various forms. It's, it's about our lifestyle. Um, you know, like we're all three full-blooded rock and rollers. We live this, eat, sleep, and breathe this. And uh, that is low down ways, like just the way that we live. It's, it's, it's side effects. Every, a lot of people, uh, you know, can't understand how we how we can keep this up, but we just kind of keep going, and uh, it's it's the only life we know. So that, that's what low down ways is. All over this land. It's the same it's thing. Just to watch the news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's an old saying: "The blues ain't nothing but a good man feeling bad." <laughs> The blues ain't nothing but a low down shake and chill, and if you ain't never had them, I hope you never will. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people have the blues these days. And yeah, it ain't gonna change. We're here to give them a soundtrack. It, it's really just, <laughs> it's an attitude. It's an attitude that's existed since the beginning of time until now, and everybody has to exercise those demons, and, and you know, we come from the city, from an urban landscape, and you know, we're living here in the present day, and, um, that's why I think we're, we're searching for a way to push the music forward. Like, we, we like to keep up certain traditions of, of, of the blues, but also, like, you know, put our own stamp on it. I think that's what you gotta do to uh, make it your own. <coughs> yeah, it's easy to feel the blues when you live in New York City, too. It's tough, it's a hard place to live, you know? It's, it's just a feeling, you know? Unless you're rich. Yeah, we yeah. ain't rich, yeah. Just what we're doing, I mean, we're just trying to bring music and happiness and partying and having a good time to everywhere we go. I mean, yeah. it's uh, not much else you could do in this life to change it. I mean, the, 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 God, the powers that be seem to be holding all the cards, so we try to do it in our small little communal way. Ooh, you know? The power of music. <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Brian? That's a little big question. <laughs> That's a heavy question. Yeah, it's a, it's a heavy question. I, I think I'd have to think about that for a while. Um, I think we're all trying to figure out what we can do to make the world better. For the three of us, all we know is, is playing music, getting up on stage every night and making people forget about what's troubling them and to drop all their problems aside and, and just have a good time and celebrate life. Yeah. Thank you, man. So much, Appreciate man. that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.